welcome to Sassafras Road Homestead. So I had somebody tell me the other day that they, they would love to do this kind of thing. They'd love to have a garden and some chickens and um, that they just don't have time or they just don't know, you know how much it would cost. So I wanted to take you guys along with me today and show you our chore routine for the mornings when taking care of the chickens. And it's, it's not bad at all. I don't know, I've never timed myself. It probably would take me like four minutes to do total. That's what we're gonna do this morning. And then I've got some things I wanna show you guys. We had to pull out some zucchini plants and we've got some tomatoes that are blushing, which means it's almost tomato season. So I'm super excited. Well, let's go take care of these chores. So I already fed them a little bit this morning. So this is just for demonstration purposes, but um, they get, I take a picture out and I put their feet in it. And then I use the same picture to collect their eggs so that I don't feel like I'm taking like two or three buckets out to the chicken coop with me. even though I just fed you. So they already ate the food I gave them this morning. That's the thing with chickens, they're always hungry. They always want a snack. We have 10 chickens. We got them last year. Um, there are pandemic chickens, or our corona chickens. And uh, we get about seven or eight eggs a day. We've gotten as many as 10. Uh, we've gotten as few as five, four. So it depends on the season and the temperature and how happy they are, but usually we'll get seven or eight a day. So I'll use the same container to collect their eggs. So this is our coop. It's got two really big doors on the side of it. My daughter picked out the collar. And so I'll look and see if there's any eggs in here. Um, it's a too, little bit too early for them to be laying yet. So this one looks like she is laying. So there's no eggs to collect this morning. So I'll leave her alone so she can do her business. But usually they lay in the late mornings and then we come out in the afternoon or the evening um, and get the eggs. If we don't make it out to collect the eggs and we just get them at night when we close them up at night, it's not a big deal. Just if I have time, I'll come out and get them, but it's not totally necessary. So I'll come over here to their water. So this water is actually okay. It's not gonna be very hot today. So I'm just gonna let them kind of keep this water. I'm just gonna freshen it up. And I'll check it later today, see if they need more, but that should last them today. When it rains, it's not so bad. When it's really hot out, then um, you'll have to replenish their water more often. Our chickens go through one of these waters a day. That's a one gallon water. And um, when it's really, really hot, we might need to fill it up a little bit more often than once a day. Um, but chickens are pretty tough. This has been just fine for them. This is the aftermath of something that I'm gonna talk to you about later. And what's really crazy is that this has been out of the ground for two days. And look at this flower that is blooming and trying to survive. <laughs> That's crazy, it has no roots. But this flower is doing its best to make another zucchini. My chickens don't seem to have any interest in eating this plant. There's the other one, it's a little bit more dead. And that is it for the chicken chores. We just come out, bring their food out, get the eggs, give them some fresh water. That's it. They don't require much more than that. They do like snacks every once in a while, so we'll give them table scrap. I, ideally, I would let them free range to eat grass and bugs, but living in town, that's just not an option for us with our neighbors. So what we do have is um, something that a friend built for us. It's a run, call it our run. And it's just some PVC pipe and some two by fours and some chicken wire over it, but it works really well when we wanna let them out in the grass to eat some bugs, we can move it around. Um, I would like to do this every day, but it doesn't always get done. So I think I'm gonna put them out this afternoon, but I like to do it in the afternoon because that's when they're done laying their eggs. And that way they can eat some bugs and eat some grass and scratch around. And it's better for them. It gives them better eggs, keeps them healthier, keeps them happier. 
So guys, that was my morning chores. I don't usually feed the chickens in the mornings because um, I'm usually busy getting ready for work and it's just not something I usually do in the morning, but it's a lot easier to film in the mornings when your family is asleep, um, before the kids wake up and the neighbors wake up and everybody else. So um, I just wanted to show you guys that if I would have had to get them fresh water today, which I do give them fresh water every day, it's just this morning, it looked really good and I gave them fresh water last night. So it just would have been as simple as me turning on the water and running the hose out and filling it up. So maybe add another minute to that, but um, we'll see when I play this back how long that took. I don't think it took five minutes. It's very doable. It's not very cumbersome for me. Um, this is kind of my thing. I My family will help me, but it's not something that I necessarily require of them. Um, but it's something I enjoy. I enjoy, I don't know, I guess that primitive feeling of having your own eggs and having your own garden and that kind of thing. I know to some people that, you know, they look at this garden and they look at the chickens and um, they may think that this would be something that would be stressful and time consuming. So um, I wanted to just show you guys that it's not and it's very doable and you know, if this is something you enjoy, then it's worth doing. Life can be very stressful and hectic and it's important to have something that you enjoy and that um, brings you peace and a place that you can come to every day um, to relax and I think it's important. And that doesn't have to be gardening or chickens, that can be whatever you enjoy. That can be painting or that can be, you know, exercising, you know, whatever you enjoy. I had to run out to the store yesterday to get a couple things and um, it wasn't a lot, like it was just a couple things here and there. I needed um, to get a couple plants and I'll explain that here in a second why I thought I needed more plants. It's just not a way that I want to spend my evening. So here's what I do. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna to go to a store and get a couple things, spend, you know, spend $40 or whatever it is, and come home and have the rest of my evening. But in reality, what happens is I get to the store and I think, okay, I'm gonna go get, you know, three things. It's not so much just being able to stick to a list. I think I can make myself stick to a list, but it's that mental game of, I hate this, it's crowded, there's people here that I don't want to see, or, you know, you just want to get in and get out. And you think, I'm going to get this while I'm here because I don't want to have to come back next week, or I don't want to have to come back in two days. So that is something that I find myself doing when I'm in the store, and it just feels like it's an endless cycle because maybe I went in for three things and I came out with 10 or 12 things. So I spend usually at least $100 every time I'm there. We have a family of four, so it's not a huge family, but we do have, you know, kids and it's summer and they eat a lot. They don't stop eating. What was I saying? You hear that? That's the girls singing their egg song. They're laying eggs. They have to let everybody know. We got hens because we live in town and we wanted to be good neighbors. And um, I thought hens would be quieter than roosters, but um, I'm not so sure. Anyway, that's like my endless cycle of grocery shopping or how it's been, you know, the last 15 years of my adult life or so. I feel like I was always running to the store for something if I didn't have it, I had to go get it. I felt a pressure to go grocery shopping once a week. And then when I got home, we'd try to put all this stuff away. My pantry is full. You know, we're very privileged to live where we live and to have this problem. Most other people in the world would only dream about this problem. Um, but I'm like, you know, usually trying to put this stuff away and there's no room and you're cramming stuff into the pantry. And you think, why did I get all this stuff? Look at all this stuff I already have. Um, so that's just something I noticed too. Living this, I don't know if I want to say it's a lifestyle. We're definitely not 100% self-sufficient by any means. And that's not a goal that I ever intend to have. But just knowing that I don't have to go to the store every time I need some eggs. Or I don't have to go to the store, you know, just to get some green beans for dinner. 
Um, things like that really, really helps cut down on those grocery store trips because like we all know, if we think we need to run into the store for three things, it's not gonna be three things and it's gonna take a lot longer than the time that we think it's gonna take. And usually the checkout lines are long or you know, whatever it is. And it just ends up being stressful and frustrating. And we, you know, I always think I'm never gonna do that again, but I always do. Cause I always think I need to go back for something else. Having these resources on my property, you know, land when we move next year and are able to grow a little bit more food and maybe have some other animals and things like that, that helps us cut back on our trips to the grocery store. It saves us a little bit of money. It really costs money to buy chicken food or chicken bedding and that kind of thing um, and repairs to stuff. I, I understand that, but the fact that it cuts down on you know, some of those extra things that we might buy that we don't need, but when we get there, we think that we have to get. And then, you know, it takes the stress, a little bit of stress away, so that you're able to spend a little bit more time at home. Another thing that we started doing is we started to buy our meat locally. So, um, had a friend who posted on Facebook that she had a beef that she was gonna send, um, that she was selling, that we bought um, a beef off of her and split it with another friend. So we got half a beef and we used our freezer and our Family, a family member's freezer to hold that. So that'll be a year's worth of beef for our family that we don't have to go to the store for. I went to a farmer's market in May. They had some fresh local pork and I, so I bought some of those things and it tasted so good. I've never had fresh, really fresh anything before and the pork chops that I got were just so, so good. There's a farm not too far away that is doing meat chickens for this first time this year and they had a pre-sale, I guess. And so, I, so I'm gonna be getting those this month. Then that same farmer said that they had a hog that they were going to send to the butcher and that it was reserved but someone backed out the last minute so i jumped on that and i said i want that i want that hog so we're going to be getting some pork too so um i don't know we're going to have to find some freezer space or really start eating our food but we have like five days until it comes so so that's fun but you know we won't have to go to the grocery store we could go to my mother-in-law's house and you know get our meat and put it in our freezer at home instead of having to go to the store and look at all the things that we think we need that we really don't so that's just something that I started doing it's a different mindset and it's not quite like a culture that um, is super common I don't think I think it's becoming more common because I think people are seeing the value in eating fresh meat and buying locally and you know not running to the store every single time that they think they need need something because um, it ends up being a lot bigger of a hassle than than what we think it's going to be so at least that's my experience I don't know if you guys have that experience or not but it's something I noticed for myself so the farm that we got our that we're gonna be getting our chickens and that we're getting our pork off of, I will link them down in the description um, the pork from the farmers market that we got I'll also link them down in the description so that if you guys are interested you can check those out So I said I had some things I wanted to show you guys. So um, one of the plants that I had to go get last night was a zucchini plant. So I know I said in my last video that I was having a problem with vine borers and those are a moth or a fly. I'm not sure which, I'm not an, ex I'm not an expert, but they are an insect that lays their eggs on squash plants and they, when the eggs hatch, they, the larva buries into the, or the stem of the squash plant because the squash plant's vine is hollow and um, then they that's what they eat so they eat the plant from the inside out basically and kills the plant and last year we had one zucchini plant because I was trying to just be very minimal and uh, zucchini plants can be really prolific so I just planted one and we lost it very early in the season and I didn't know what it was from at the time but I know now that it was vine borer and it was probably a really bad case of it. So we lost that probably by, probably by July, the middle of July or this time last year. So it's just a plant that I got from the grocery store, kind of like, you know, pre-potted plant, but it looks like there's three plants in there. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So what I'm gonna do today is separate those three, put them each in their own pot, and that way they can grow a little bit more of a root system. And then probably in a couple of days or later this week, I'll plant them where my 
other zucchini plants were. And I've also got some tomatoes blushing, so I'll show you guys that. So this is where my zucchini plants were the other day. Rest in peace. I had one bigger one here and a smaller one on, no, I had two, I had one big one here and then a smaller one beside it and I said I was going to keep both of them in case one of them got eaten by vine borers and so I had to pull them both out because they were starting to die. And then that was one of the ones I showed you in the chicken coop that was trying to flower and still trying to survive. This one beside it here doesn't look great but it doesn't look awful. It's still alive, definitely. I haven't seen any major signs of vine borers. Usually you can tell, usually you can tell if you see some sawdust type material on the stem and it can be like they can go in, you know, on one of these stems or they can go in like on this main stalk here. And um, I haven't seen any really obvious signs yet on this plant, so. I'm hoping that this one will be saved but me having those three other plants um, go ahead and get them started and getting their root systems established will be really helpful because uh, zucchini plants grow pretty quick and I'm hoping that we will still be able to have some um, harvest before, before the freeze hits usually in October and a lot of people really swear by planting zucchinis a little bit later in the year because you miss that life cycle of the vine borer. So their life cycle obviously right now is larva. So they are, you know, that's the time that they're destroying plants. But if you have a younger plant that you grow up and it's more mature later in the season, then those larva have grown into the adults, or at least that's what the experts say. I'm not an expert. That's what I hear. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be the case. Guys, I wanna give you an update on the Franken plant. Look at this guy. What is it? Tell me in the comments if you know what this is. It looks like a cantaloupe to me. So everybody, don't look at the weeds. <laughs> this is a Roma tomato and it's blushing. So I'm very excited about that. So what tomatoes do is they usually stay green like this for a really long time and then eventually when they start to blush so blushing means when they start to turn that lighter green shade and then they get a yellow orange and then they turn red and then that's when they're ripest so it's the chemicals inside the tomato that cause this to happen and it's exciting to see your plants growing it's exciting to see like your big tomatoes but when they're green um, it's hard to wait on them to turn red so it's always really exciting when they start to turn red and that means you're that much closer to being able to eat them. So these romas here you can see that they are still green but they're starting to turn like this really light green and that just means that they will be blushing soon. So this plant is a sun sugar variety and I showed you guys this on my last video. This was the plant that we harvested off first. So we had our first tomato off this on the 4th of July and my son and I shared it. But these are a yellow cherry variety and I never had them before until this year and they are so good. And I'm gonna pick this one. Mm. So good. Not all the way ripe, still really good. Guys, look at these black cherry tomatoes. They they're really starting to turn and these are the ones last time that I showed you that I thought the color of their even the green tomatoes were beautiful because they were a really dark rich green and it looks like they're starting to get some purple some purple color to them so I don't I don't think it'll be too much longer on these you can see these cracking here and what happens when tomatoes crack like this usually means it's because they got too much water too fast so I haven't watered my garden in okay a couple days ago i had a few plants that looked a little dry so i did water just a couple plants but i don't water my garden regularly at all because i have all this mulch down and all these wood chips that has really helped to keep the weeds down and the watering down i don't pull weeds either unless i'm just out here 
Um, and I just see a couple while I'm out here, but I don't spend a lot of time weeding. It probably is neat, gonna be needed to come out here one day and pull some weeds. Maybe I'll do that this weekend because it's kind of, it's supposed to be uh, overcast and rain off and on. Yeah, not something that I spend a lot of time doing. So these are the black cherry tomatoes and we will have some of those soon. These are my black beauty tomatoes. I've got three on here. Last time I saw my first one and they're looking beautiful. I love the purple skin collar on them. These Amish paste are getting really close. I'm guessing these will be one of my first really big tomatoes to ripen. Even though they're not really slicers, they're made more for making sauce and um, paste and that kind of thing, hence the name Amish paste. But this one is getting really close right here. You can see how it's turning more like a yellowish green. If I were to guess, these early girl varieties will be the next ones. Um, it's kind of hard to see on camera, I think, but they look a lot more yellow than what this shows. And they're really good size and looking really healthy. So those will probably be my first slicers, as the name suggests. I'm gonna come over here and look at this zucchini plant. So far, it's still really healthy. I don't see any signs of insect damage on this one at all hope this, if any of them pull through, I hope it's this one because it has given me the most zucchinis. Really healthy, big old flower. And then there's a zucchini down there. Probably could pick that today. I'll let my son pick it. Really six to eight inches is where you want to harvest your zucchini. If they get any bigger than that, then sometimes the seeds get hard and this, it gets kind of bitter. So this one will probably be ready later today. So, so far the green beans are doing really well. We're getting about a half a pound a day at least. And we're able to put some in the freezer now, which is great. So our pole beans are starting to produce now. I've got these pole beans here that I thought they were originally bush beans that I had to build a makeshift trellis for. And then we've got the pole beans on this trellis and the last trellis down there at the end. These are called greasy grit beans and they're starting to get pretty good sized. I think we'll be harvesting off of this trellis probably in the next couple of days, maybe even as soon as tomorrow. My goal with beans this year is to be able to freeze enough so that we have enough in our freezer to be able to have green beans all year long until next June or July when we start getting more on. And I still don't know what we're gonna do about our garden next year because if we move in May, then I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get much of a garden started. I still will probably do at least something but um i won't know what that looks like until it gets closer to time so obviously i have to show you my noodle bean trellis last time i showed you they were almost touching at the top and now they're overlapping and the whole trellis is going to be covered very soon it's just beautiful my other pole beans here are a lot slower they're still alive but they're not nearly as prolific as the noodle beans so they are growing. They're probably about four and a half feet. I will give them some more time and try to be patient with them. They may end up being my best ones, but sometimes that seems like that's how it is. Cucumbers are really looking good. Getting tall. Franken melon growing. Maybe it's just a cantaloupe, guys. Maybe it's not a freaking plant. I don't know. Let me know what you think it is. So thank you guys for joining me today. Some things that I want to start doing for my channel is that I want to do a giveaway. So when I get to 100 subscribers, I am planning on doing some sort of a giveaway, some sort of gift card to something, maybe like um, some sort of local business in your area. Make sure you like and subscribe. So stay tuned for that. Something else I want to do is ask you guys what kind of videos that you want to see. Do you want to see more garden tours? Do you want to see a nighttime garden tour with a, um, like with the lights in the garden and the lightning bugs? Do you want to see any more like homesteady things like cast iron cooking, like cleaning motivation videos? Because I actually really enjoy watching those kind of things. So um, let me know if there's something that you guys want to see. Put it in the comments and I'll try to make that happen. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time. I also wanted to show you guys this super cute necklace. It is made by Harvest Moon Designs and she sells super cute jewelry, um, 
craft things and it's all really, really affordable. So I will link her info in the description as well.